We're in the process of turning my 1998 2.5 RS into a proper 22B P25 conversion car all the bells and whistles and all the good stuff. So in the last video, we left off getting our STI six speed restored, refreshed back in the car, our tubular subframe from more sport back in the car and a handful of other things done to the chassis. And where I want to pick up today is start getting some more stuff back on the car. I would really like to start on doing the exterior body work to the car, but we need to wait until our wide body comes in and that should hopefully be coming in by the end of the month. We ordered the Lux Aero or the Aero Lux kit and last time I talked to them, they told me end of October, it should ship out. So for the next week, week and a half, we're gonna just keep focusing on the mechanical side of things to get as much back on the car as we can and less stuff floating around the shop. So the first thing I wanna start with today is getting our pedal box reassembled. So we did delete the OEM gas pedal or accelerator pedal and we are using a drive-by wire pedal with an iWire bracket. That's an 07 STI throttle pedal with iWire's bracket there. But we still need our clutch pedal and our brake pedal. So this will all still mount up relatively the same, but we do need to reassemble it. Now it's been a little while since I took this apart. Actually, I think Levi took this apart when he was there. So I need to reference a whole bunch of photos that I took, figure out how to put all this back onto that, then we can get that installed with our freshly Cerakoted brake booster here. So let me look at some pictures, figure out how to put all this back together. Then we should be, we should be well on our way. Pedals all reassembled, not too bad. We've got one spring over here for the clutch, a uh, little stopper guy, stopper feet, stopper feet, stopper feet, switch, 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 and then 112 mil right there. So these are actually gonna go through the firewall. We're gonna get this put in first because the brake booster and the pedal assembly actually share bolts. So these studs will actually hold up that plate there. So let's get our pedals installed on the two studs that come out. And those are actually gonna hold our master or yeah, our master reservoir for the clutch. So we actually might be able to put that on also. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna, actually no, I do have an STI one, so we can use that for this as well. Pedal assembly can actually get fed through the firewall. Like so. There's like these little spacer guys that I gotta feed it through. Starting on the inside of the car here, we have our pedals in. Now, the rods that come through the firewall, they have these little retaining clip guys that hold them. So when you push in the pedal, it actuates the arm and then moves the actual cylinder. So we have those hooked up for the brake and the clutch. The clutch comes up and it uses this long rod right in the middle to that, which actuates the clutch. Up here, we have our brake booster in. That I just need to leave. That has been Cerakoted and still has like three day cure time left. So we're just gonna leave that alone. I was going to put on the brake master cylinder, but I can't because I need an STI one. This is, however, an STI clutch master, so that can stay on. I was debating having Ben Cerakote that also, but honestly, I just took it apart and cleaned it fairly, fairly easily. There's one little locking pin right there. If you knock that out, this whole reservoir will come off and then you can clean that guy out. So it is dry right now. The brake booster, I have the factory 2.5 RS master for the brakes, but here's the thing. This is a one inch master and we need a one and one sixteenth inch because that's what the STIs use. Because we are using Brimbos, we want to match our master with the Brimbos. Will this work? 100% yes, this will. However, from what I've read online, it will give inconsistent brake pedal feel and I'd rather have consistent and match the brakes to the proper brake master. So the RS one, I'll set it aside. I mean, it's a good one. I cleaned it up and everything like that. But like I said, as you guys can see, there's just one pin that holds these in. You knock out the pin, you pull out the two seals that sit inside of there and then you can pull it off. Now, additionally, I do wanna to touch on something else with these. If you are 
STI swapping your car, there is a difference between these. This is a dual stage master, meaning it's got two, two, uh, two reservoir feeds. On non-ABS cars and some others, it will be a single stage, which means it will only have one like that. So when you're doing this mix and match stuff, you have to kind of figure out like what your car is set up for. You might have to do custom lines and things like that. So for us, we can just buy an 05 to 07. It should fit in no problem. It's a one in one sixteenth instead of just being a one inch. We're into the next day. Yesterday after we tried the fuel filler neck and whatnot, I jetted out, I had to order some parts. I ordered all new wheel bearings, hubs, um, axle boot rebuild kits, a whole bunch of other stuff for this thing. Uh, the proper filler neck for this. But then I got to thinking, cause I was originally gonna send my harness out to iWire to have them do a merge, but I don't, I don't see any reason why I would do that. I can't, cause on this, we're gonna be using a Haltech R3 or R5 or the new S line that has come out. And we don't, there's nothing I can think of that would, that would make it seem like we would need to do a merge harness because everything's gonna be controlled by the standalone. The chassis wiring is gonna stay the same because we're still using all GM6 or all 2.5 RS stuff with the exception of the engine, the throttle pedal, the fuel, everything that the Haltech can control. So we're not going to, which means we can start putting the interior in. That's gonna be heater core, um, AC dealio thingy and whatnot. Uh, dash bar, the dash or the uh, firewall mat, a whole bunch of stuff. Because I, I logically don't see any reason why we would have to do a harness merge. So I'm not going to. So on the floor, I've got the heater core, the AC guy, the fans, all that, the blower fan, all that stuff. And we're going to get all that installed. But before we do that, I have to clean it up very thoroughly because it's got years of nastiness that have just been caked onto it. Because I don't think this car has ever been apart. Now there was a lot of cleaning that had to go into these parts. These things have, it's a 28 year old car at this point and a lot of this stuff has never been cleaned and just collected dust. The inside of the heater core is just caked in it. So I've been using a lot of this interior detail cleaner and a couple rags and I eventually found out that a paintbrush works pretty well for cleaning a lot of this stuff. So I grabbed a brand new paintbrush and it worked really well on the engine harness because you can get into all of those little grooves on the sheathing, but this took way longer than I wanted to, maybe like three hours of just cleaning this stuff. I've got the firewall mat all cleaned up. We need to take out the brake booster and the pedals before we can put that back in. That was my fault because they do pass through right there. And this does kind of add to the spacing of everything on the firewall. I've got the heater core and the blower motor all cleaned up. These are temporarily in because we do need to cut our firewall a little bit for this plate. Now, since we're using a Haltech R3 in this car, I am going to make an engine harness for that, which means we need breakaway connectors for the firewall. So this, I've already checked clearance, is gonna go right about there. And then we're gonna use two quick disconnects for our engine harness and to control everything else that we need to control. So before we start uninstalling and installing everything, let's get the firewall cut for this, get this drilled and installed. I am gonna to have to use a little bit of touch-up paint, which I do have to clean up our cut, but that is where the old engine harness passed through. So that's where our new one's gonna go. Engine harness adaptions all set up. This way we can disconnect the engine harness from here versus having to like feed it through the firewall. I learned that the first time I built an engine harness. It's just such a pain. Plus I think that looks pretty good. Once the engine, the intake manifold and all that's in here, that's not gonna be too prevalent. Now I am gonna have 
to have both of these jet right pretty hard because we're gonna we are gonna have a downpipe here the downpipe is gonna be cerakoted those are gonna be wrapped in dr25 so they should be fine if we need to put some heat sleeve on those we definitely can but i mean keep in mind this is also where the stock harness came out for the rs so even if we did use an oe style harness it would have to come out of that hole and we're going rotated so our turbo would still be there regardless so that's kind of the best case scenario for what we're looking at there now that we've got that situated i need to figure out what goes through that hole let me hang on let me look this up real quick it actually looks like part of the bulkhead harness actually goes through here so I guess before we jump to taking out the pedals and everything to get the dash mat in, let's start getting the harness in. I know it's gonna start here, come down, wrap a little, little wrap along the bottom of the core support here, then kind of come up to this area. So let me grab the harness and I guess we'll start trying to fit that thing in here to see where it goes. Because if there is something that goes through that hole, I wanna get it figured out now before we start putting more stuff in the way of it. Granted, I am gonna have to take out the blower fan and the heater core later to be able to wire up our ECU and everything like that. I would rather just get it kind of figured out now. Factory fuse box is all in, so mounts up here. And then I was kind of confused on what wires went where. You have to feed the entire harness side through the little grommet that's right here. Now, I unfortunately had some clip breakage, so I'm gonna have to order some clips. I'm gonna have Ben powder coat all this stuff before I actually bolt all that up. But harness comes in. The giant grommet obviously is going to go through the firewall here. You come down and then it's going to on a factory one there's going to be two clips there the clips were broken on mine so i just drilled holes on them and then ran some allen heads through there some m6 by ones with some nuts so that's not going to go anywhere harness comes out goes underneath of the radiator supports here comes around comes up and then wraps through goes to the abs unit you've got a ground your headlight connections headlight connections are obviously on that side and then you've got the fender marker light harness also which goes up here and those are two more brackets i'm gonna have to have ben uh powder coat for us but that sorts that so i'm actually pretty happy with where we are right now that i need to order the ecu i need to order the r3 in the next couple of days <sighs> that's gonna be expensive tomorrow morning we need to come back over here and clean this harness and then start to get that installed because that harness there is the one that comes up through the firewall here and we can't get any of the heater core stuff in permanently. I mean, we can't put it in permanently anyways until we at least wire up the Haltech uh, up to our quick connects right here in the firewall. So if we can get it done now though, it's always positive. So to get the interior dash mat back in, the brake booster has to come back out and the pedals all have to come back out as well because I totally spaced that the dash mat has to go in first and then all of this stuff feeds through it. And you have to have the dash mat behind the pedals and everything like that because it actually does add to the spacing of where it needs to be. Granted, some of it does have little isolators and spacers that go around some of the hardware for the brake booster and the pedals and things like that. That extra cushioning between the pedals and the dash mat actually stiffen things up quite a bit for at least the accelerator pedal because I was a little worried that thing was a little bit floppy but it actually feels a lot stiffer having that mat behind there. Now I'm pretty sure this mat is nothing more than sound detonating and maybe a fire retardant for the firewall just to help in case of a fire but I'm not 100% sure on that. back at it cleaning again another engine harness or just another harness and these things take a good amount of time to clean because there's just so many little nooks and crannies on them but the paintbrush again works the best the where's the harness go featuring today's special guest 
stock harness. So our keeping, some of it we're not. So we'll kind of delete stuff as we need to and as we go through this. But I got the harness all cleaned up. I found that a paintbrush kind of works the best. All of this mess of harness is gonna have to wait until the dash bar goes in because some of that clips up to the actual dash bar. So for now, it's just gonna chill right there. I did test fit the blower fan and heater core back in here just to make sure that the wiring is routed where it needs to and it fits perfect. The wire harness does come up on top of the blower fan here and then just wraps around. All of that just goes behind the heater core right in the middle. Up in the engine bay, I did remove a lot of stuff that isn't going to be needed anymore and I have our harness ran. Now, I'm not a huge fan of how the factory does it where they have this harness run down like that, then come up to each side. I think it's a little bit silly. They could have shortened that and brought it up, but I'm not gonna stress it too much. So we've got this running across with our starter wire, which I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be using yet or if I'm just going to run a keypad switch for the starter. We've got our brake fluid reservoir sensor, which I don't think I need that either. I don't think I need that. So I actually might cut that off as well. Speed sensor, ground, 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 speed sensor, wiper, motor, power supply and feed and everything like that. I cut off the old ignition harness, which ran here. The MAF sensor, MAP, and all that stuff is all removed. So I think that looks pretty clean for having the stock wiring in here as much as we can and having it cleaned up. This I might end up redoing. This is for the alternator and everything like that, alternator and AC. I don't know if I'm gonna run AC in this car. I did leave the option to be able to run AC if I absolutely want to, but I think I'm pretty happy with that. We also still have plenty of room right there for our engine harness to be able to come out of that. So I wish that I could get a lot more of the interior in permanently, but we just can't until we at least get the Haltech mounted up right down here, running up to the other side of this breakaway connector on the inside of the car and get that wired. Once that portion is wired, then we can actually permanently start installing a lot of the interior stuff, but this is still good progress. We've got all the wiring situated where it needs to go. The pedals in, brake booster in, all of that. I did order the brake master last night, the clutch line and a couple other small things just so we can start wrapping up a lot of like the, the smaller things in the engine bay. I wanted to give this a quick test fit. This is from Zach Trafton. This has to come down a little bit to use that spare or that extra bolt right behind that one. But this is our washer tank reservoir, which actually looks real nice in there. So huge shout out to Zach for sending that over. The little pump will go right down there. This is meant for a GD, but it also fits on a GC. You are just gonna have to run a couple spacers on the back side of it because these do not have the brackets that come off like GDs do, but that is totally fine. We can easily get that sorted. I just wanted to make sure it fit, which it does. I also cut out the engine harness off of the stock one because none of this is getting used so there's no point in having it. There might be a couple engine grounds on here that I will need to uh, ground out to the chassis, which if that's the case, that's totally fine. But, oh yeah, iWire did call me back after I'd called them and they did say it's a fairly analog car. If you're using a standalone like we are and you're gonna be wiring up a lot of the stuff you can, you do not have to emerge harness. It's just a little bit silly to pay to have a merge harness done and then pay to build your own harness afterwards. So regardless of the fact, good progress on the 2.5 RS STI conversion, 22B P25 clone thing that we are building. Uh, I'm hyped for it. A lot of the electrical is sorted and taken care of at this point in the engine bay and on the firewall at least. But that's all I got for you guys on this one. I'm pretty excited with where we've gotten now. While we're in the like midst of waiting for stuff, we're still able to knock out a lot of things. I don't know where we're gonna jump in the next video. It's probably gonna start being Actually, we might be able to start putting a lot of stuff in the trunk in the interior, at least for all the interior wiring over there back in. I don't know where we're gonna go quite yet, but with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, Psy, and or whatever color it turns to you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you wanna be, I'll put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet, but with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.